Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Schenkel United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. Do we need to turn a microphone off? Dan's working on it. So this morning we just have a couple of announcements. Um, so we, we got the congregational meeting out of the way. How do you like that? Do that first of all and just get that out of the way. Um, next Sunday is the ice cream social. So $5, you can have a bowl. Is it all you can eat? $5, so you can come back for seconds. So um, all kinds of toppings and goodies to go on it. So that's um, next Sunday after this service. Um, there are two funerals this week that um, from people who have died from the church. Ron Christman passed away, so most of you are aware of that already. <clears throat> His service will be on Friday at noon at the Catagnus Funeral Home in Pottstown. You can visit the family from 11 to 12 on Friday if, if you don't want to stay for the service. That will be at noon. And also Carol Likens died as well, and her service will be here at the church on Wednesday. And that service will be at 10.30 on Wednesday morning. And you can visit the family from 9.30 to 10.30 um, here at the church before that service. So um, just want you to be aware of those, those things that are happening. Are there other announcements that the community needs to be aware of? Hi, mine was just more that I have a Bible up in the front. So if you haven't signed it, it would be great if you could. It is for the baptism of my nephew Luke. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So the, the Bible is on the table over there by the bulletins. So if you have a chance, if you haven't had a chance yet to sign it, you can do so after the service. Okay, and then it will be given to Luke. Our friends helping friends coupons uh, okay. with us again today. They're five dollars. The uh, shopping day is October 19th from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Okay. Okay. So Tony and Louise have the friends helping friends coupons for Boscovs with them. Five dollars. The shopping day is October 19th from 8 a.m. 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Okay, you can do an awful lot of shopping in that time. Make out your Christmas list. So, yeah, do your Christmas shopping in October. There you go. Okay. Also, for everybody following the service, there will be refreshments up in the Grove. It's in honor of Luke's baptism. We appreciate everybody coming and having some fellowship time. Okay. Don't, don't just hurry off. Come up to the pavilion for refreshments after the service. Okay. Okay, let's pause for a word of prayer and then we'll sing our choral introit. Loving God, we give thanks for this day, for the beauty of this day, for the breeze that refreshes, for this opportunity to be gathered together outdoors for our worship to share communion together, to be present for the baptism of a baby. And we thank you for all who are present here today and ask that you would open our hearts to your Holy Spirit's working, that you would be able to do your transforming work in each one of us that we would be willing partners in that work you desire to do. We give thanks in Christ's name. Amen. So just as a reminder, we do this as an echo. So Susan plays the first, and then we echo it. <laughs>
as we gather and worship this morning, the most powerful and revealing symbols of our faith stand before us, water and table and cross. The water reveals the cleansing and restorative power of God's love. The communion table reminds us that we are invited to dine together with Christ, to be served in preparation for service. The table reveals a love that strengthens and nourishes those who feed from it. The cross reminds us with mute eloquence of God's passionate concern for humanity. The cross reveals a love tangible as wood, extensive as eternity. We praise the God who speaks to us through water and table and cross. that the heavenly realm is near. God calls to each of us to listen and act. Let us place ourselves before God and open our minds and our hearts to God's loving forgiveness. God, who has promised eternal life to all, we come before you as humble people. You give us many opportunities to serve, but we turn away. Sometimes we think of ourselves before we think of others. We take paths that lead away from you, not toward you. We need you, God. Be with us on our journey. Help us to grow closer to you and to reach out to those in need. Through God, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, we pray. Amen. When we confess our sin, 
God is faithful and just to forgive us and restore us to right relationship. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and set free. <coughs> First reading today is from Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 6, God's covenant with Abram. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and my, the heir to my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You, shall, you have given me no offspring. So a slave born to my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your own very issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward the heaven and count the stars. If you are able to count them, then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Second reading is a psalm, Psalm 33, verses 12 to 22. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, and happy whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven, he sees all mankind. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all, and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory, and by its great might it cannot save. Truly, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him, because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel text this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, and it follows the part that is fairly common to many of us, where Jesus tells his disciples not to worry about your life, about what you eat, what you'll put on your body, all of those things, because God will provide for those things. And then Jesus continues, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Word of God for the people of God. So this week I've been thinking about fear and what fear does to us and how, how often in Scripture people are told to not be afraid. So I figure if, 
if God, if the angel, you know, you read scripture and whenever an angel appears to somebody in the Bible, what are the first words they usually say? Fear not. Do not be afraid. You know, I think it would be pretty scary to see an angel. I don't really know what they look like, you know, but it'd be pretty fearful, I think. So do not fear. And even in our, in our Old Testament text, Abram was told to not be afraid. What was Abram afraid of? Not having his own son be inherit all of his goods, right? That was his fear. He says, a, a slave born in my household is going to inherit everything. And God says, don't be afraid. I'm going to provide. And then Jesus says in our gospel text, don't be afraid, little flock. It's a term of endearment, isn't it? Don't be afraid. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And so fear, you know, is a pretty big part of our lives, I think. And sometimes it's a bigger part than others, right? It depends on what's happening in our lives. But what, one of the general things that fear tends to do is it limits our vision, right? When we're afraid, you know, that's, a, that's the only thing we can think about. It limits our vision. It also paralyzes our actions. Like you just you can't, can't do anything. You're just, you're paralyzed with fear. And so then it makes it difficult to be able to imagine a hopeful future or anything good because fear kind of takes over our thoughts and all of that. And I, I was reminded of that when, um, so a few years ago, Faith and I went um, skydiving. So that's something that Faith had always wanted to do. I was kind of, eh, I could take it or leave it. But because she wanted to do it, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do it too. So I gave it to her for Christmas. We couldn't do it, you know, till May or something. Well, that's one of the scariest things I've ever done in my life. It was a tandem jump. So, you know, it wasn't up to me to know how to open the parachute or anything. Um, but the guy that... I was with, so you're strapped, I'm in strapped in front of him, so he had a video camera on his wrist, so he could, so we have a disc with a video of our jumps. And so what I noticed when, when I saw, so we're getting up next ones to jump out of a perfectly good airplane, um, is that I'm like this, you know, and you can see all the tendons in my neck. You know, that's what fear does to me, right? Like, I got it. So I'm trying to remember when you jump, you don't, you don't open up right away. So you got you to gotta keep yourself out of the way of the guy who knows what he's doing, right? So you, you jump, and then when he tells you, then you can go like this, and, and you free fall. And it's, it's a great experience, but I don't need to do it again. You know, I did it once. That was fine. But that's one of the things fear does. So that's, you know, it's kind of paralyzing, right? You're like, oh, you're tense. And, and some of you, you know, you know that feeling. Like, oh, I'm afraid of something. So what is it that you are afraid of? And you don't, you don't have to tell us. Just, just think about what, what is it that you are afraid of? And what does it do to you? Because it affects all of us differently, right? So some people are afraid and they get really grouchy and snappy at people. And it's not, it, it comes out like anger, right? Because they're afraid. How does it, it cause you to act or to react? Because once we're aware of it, then we can do something about it, right? When we're aware of, oh, I'm, I'm afraid. And, and what, does, what does the text say? Do not be afraid. Why? Because it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The kingdom of God is ours. It's God's good pleasure to give it to us. What a gift. And freely given. We can't buy it. 
We haven't bought it. We haven't done anything to earn it. It's just gifted freely. God's grace poured out on us. Isn't that beautiful to think of that? If we have received all that, then we are free, as Jesus goes on to say, free to sell your possessions, give things to the poor, go and live your life because you're free and you don't have to be afraid. So what would it be like if there was nothing to be afraid of? How would that change how you live your life? Kind of feel like a weight was lifted, wouldn't it? Because let's face it, there are lots of things in this world to legitimately be afraid of. And there are even more that our society wants to make us afraid of. Right? We live in a society that, let's face it, capitalism is built on supply demand, right? And the idea of scarcity. It might not be enough. Oh no. Be afraid. You know, and I've heard a lot recently about the logarithms that they use on social media because they get more clicks if you're angry. If something you see makes you angry or afraid and then you click on it and you go down the rabbit hole, right? And, and they do that because it's a human trait that we react that way, right? And so it's very radical to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, and not go down those rabbit holes and live freely and not be afraid which is exactly what Jesus wants us to do. Not be afraid. Do not be afraid. All these things are given to you. God is providing. We have been freely gifted. So when I think of you know, being afraid and the fear and what it does to us and how to combat that in my life, one of the things that helps me is to be grounded. And I need to do that in the mornings. Okay, because otherwise, start your day and you're off on your day and then pretty soon the fears come in and the worry and the... And I get like this, right? <laughs> but to be grounded in the morning, to take time to remember passages like this, to remember passages like from the Gospel of John that Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it in abundance. That's not full of fear, is it? Abundant life, the grace of God. And one of the, one of the things that I do that someone gave to me is a little pamphlet of daily prayers. And the one that I found, especially this week, helpful, it's, it's marked for Thursday, and it works any day of the week, but it's just the one for Thursday. It's from Teresa of Avila. And I have, I have changed the word, so I changed the word God to the word love to open it up for us a little more. So we don't just think God, some guy up in the sky, right? Love. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are changing. Love alone is changeless. Patience attains the good. One who has love lacks nothing. Love alone fills all our needs. So that can help to ground us and remind us. Do not be afraid, little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Let's remember that as we continue our service with 
a baptism of a baby who can't do anything to earn God's grace. Baptism is just God's grace poured out. And as we come to the table, we haven't done anything to earn the body and blood of Christ. It was, has been given to us freely. So let's receive it as it was given freely and then go on to pass it along freely. font. So I'd like to invite the family forward. Eric and Laura and the baptizee. And also um, the godparents, if the godparents are here, Leslie and Adam, you can come up and stand with them as well. So there's a part for the congregation in the bulletin as well. So They were bringing children to Jesus that Jesus might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, Jesus was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the realm of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the realm of God like a child shall not enter it. And Jesus took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. Jesus said, unless we are born anew, we cannot see the reign of God. Unless we are born of water and the Spirit, we cannot enter God's new order. Paul the Apostle said, all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into Christ's death. We were buried therefore with Christ by baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of God, we too might walk in newness of life. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God. Inasmuch as the promise of the gospel is not only to us, but also to our children, baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of their acceptance into the care of Christ's church, the sign and seal of their participation in God's forgiveness 
and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. This is the water of baptism. Out of this water we rise with new life, forgiven of sin and one in Christ, members of Christ's body. And so then I have questions for, it says questions of the candidates, but questions of the parents and the godparents of the candidate. Do you desire to have your child baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. Will you encourage this child to renounce the powers of evil and to receive the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Will you teach this child that he may be led to profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If so, answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? If so, answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Do you promise according to the grace given you to grow with this child in the Christian faith? to help him to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ by celebrating Christ's presence, by furthering Christ's mission in all the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian Church so that he may affirm his baptism. If so, answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. And the Congregational's Ascent. Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them the gift of grace in baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support, and care to the one about to be baptized as he lives and grows in Christ? We promise our love, support, and care. Then let us unite with the church in all times and places in confessing our faith in the triune God and today we're using the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the gift of creation called forth by your saving word. Before the world had shape and form, your spirit moved over the waters. Out of the waters of the deep, you formed the firmament and brought forth the earth to sustain all life. In the time of Noah, you washed the earth with waters of the flood, and your ark of salvation bore a new beginning. In the time of Moses, your people Israel passed through the Red Sea waters from slavery to freedom and crossed the flowing Jordan to enter the promised land. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus Christ, who was nurtured in the water of Mary's womb. Jesus was baptized by John in the water of the Jordan became living water to a woman at the Samaritan well, washed the feet of the disciples and sent them forth to baptize all the nations by water and the Holy Spirit. Blessed by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water, by your Holy Spirit, save those who confess the name of Jesus Christ, that sin may have no power over them. Create new life in the one baptized this day, that he may rise in Christ. 
Glory to you, eternal God, the one who was and is and shall always be, world without end. Amen. Introduce the newest member of Christ Church, Luke There's always something that you forget. So we have 
I will try to light this, but with the wind, I'm not sure it'll work. Yeah, it's not going to. We have a baptismal candle for Luke that you can, you know, light on the anniversary of his baptism if you would like. And in here we have his baptismal certificate and also a little um, prayer shawl that was made by members of the congregation. Okay, so little gifts for Luke on his baptism. Okay. So let us pause and pray for the one baptized today. Gracious God, you have filled the world with joy by giving us the gift of Jesus. Bless this newly baptized person. May he be filled with joy. May he never be ashamed to confess a personal faith in you. <coughs> Bless the parents of this child. May they always show their gratitude for the life you have given by loving and caring for Luke. Bless these, your faithful people. Unite them in the peace of Christ and the company of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we come to our uh, prayer time for prayers of the people. And I have a few. We will be remembering, of course, the Chrisman family and the Likens family. Um, also, this week uh, we lost, and I understand that uh, last week uh, Wanda mentioned Sue Bertolette, uh, pastor of St. John's in Lansdale, and she died this week, and her service will be on Friday, and so um, we'll be lifting up her, her family and also the church. She was at St. John's for 42 years, first as the associate pastor and then as the senior pastor. She just retired in June, on June 12th, and um, so we'll be, be holding those people up. We'll also be holding up uh, Rosemary's family. Rosemary lost her sister this week in a fire, and so um, we'll be holding them in prayer. All those who are facing surgery this week, um, are there other requests that you would like to be remembered at this time? Say, Laura. Yes. Yes, Laura Golden usually is at the early service. Her son Christian has been deployed for, has it been more than a year, I want to say? So he's been deployed on a ship somewhere, but he's coming coming home this, this week. So that's a, a blessing for Laura. She's really looking forward to that. <coughs> Prayers of joy, of course, for a uh, baptism of our mm -hmm. grandson, and uh, welcome to uh, Eric's family who are all here. Uh, it's just a, a joyous occasion. So. Yeah, it is. It always is. Gather lots of family together, right? Okay, let's go to God in prayer together. Loving and faithful God, we give thanks again for this day you've given to us, and we give thanks for these times of celebration, for baptisms, and for families being able to travel and come together and, and celebrate joyous occasions. We also are mindful in the midst of this, of those families who are grieving today, and we lift up the Bertolette family and the church family at St. John's in Lansdale and ask for your grace and comfort and courage for them to move forward. For the Chrisman family and their loss and the Likens family and, and friends and ask for your blessing upon all those um, services this week that they would be times of uh, closure, times of remembrance in times of honoring the lives of those who have passed. We pray today for Christian and ask for blessings for him as in these final days before his deployment ends and pray that he would have a, a good time of reunion with Laura and other family members. And we lift up Rosemary's family and ask for your grace and comfort in the midst of their grief as well and the trauma 
that they have experienced and ask for comfort and your grace. We pray for all those who are facing surgery this week and ask for your blessing of courage and for skill for the surgeons and for good recoveries. We give thanks for little Cameron coming through the surgery so well and ask for good healing for him and for no return of the tumor that he had. We lift up all those who live with the challenges of mental health issues and pray for good help for them, whether it's with psychologists or medical doctors, with supportive people in their lives that you would guide and, and bless them that they may be able to live abundant lives and in safety. We lift up also our members, Michaela and Scott, Sandy, James, Brian, and Emily, Josh, and Drew, and ask that you would bless them especially this week and grant them ever-deepening faith and trust in you. We pray also for the people of Kentucky and know that they have been suffering with so much rain and flooding and, and loss of life and of homes and cars and ask for grace and strength for them during these difficult days. For those who live in the western part of the country and are threatened by wildfires, we pray for them and for the firefighters as they try to bring them under control and to save lives and to save property. And we lift up the people of Ukraine in the midst of the warfare that is being waged against them. We pray for peace. We pray for safety, for an escape, and that those who have fled would be able to return in a measure of safety and security. And we just pray that there would be an end to this warfare in the Ukraine and pray that you would continue to give us understanding of ways to help and to be a blessing to the people of Ukraine and their suffering. We thank you, loving God, that you have given to us a prayer that we can always pray together as a faith community, that one that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Once again, thank you for your faithfulness in supporting the ministries of Schenkel United Church of Christ. And as we enter a new month, we have a new special offering. This month is for the North Coventry Meals on Wheels program. So just keep that in mind in your giving. And I understand that in, in your bulletin is the wrong song for our offering response. So the right song is number 36 in the Summer Song Book. Um, the chorus from We Plow the Fields and Scatter. So if you could turn to that, then we'll sing our offering response and then have our prayer. provision for our needs. And we thank you that we are able to give back a portion of what we have so freely received. We ask your blessing upon these offerings and all the places that they will go to serve your people and to share your love throughout the world. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.
So for our off or offering, for our communion today, we will uh, be coming forward to receive the bread and the cup of juice. Um, I'll just, if, if your preference is to take them both back to your seat with you and wave and we all commune together, you can do that. If that's too difficult because of the uneven ground, you are free to commune when you receive them. Okay, so I will leave that mm -hmm. decision up to you. But if you take them back to your seat, we will have a time when we can all commune together. Okay, and if you are not able to come up, give me a high sign and Dan, who's going to be holding the the glasses for us will will come to you, okay? So it's not a problem for us to come to you. Because I know that it's not the easiest ground to walk on. It's a little different than in the sanctuary or in the pavilion where it's concrete. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. In company with all who hunger for spiritual food, we come to this table to know the risen Christ in the sharing of this life giving bread. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God most high. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Eternal God, holy and mighty. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise and to worship you in every place where your glory abides. You laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you shall endure. You are always the same and your years will never end. You made us in your image and called us to be your people. But we turned from you, leaving sin and death to reign. Still you loved us and sought us. In Christ your grace defeated death and opened the way to eternal life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with the heavenly choirs and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You sent your only begotten, in whom your fullness dwells, to be for us the way, the truth, and the life. Revealing your love, Jesus taught those who would hear him, healed those who believed in him, received all who sought him, and lifted the burden of their sin. We glorify you for your great power and love at work in Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us a new people by water and the Spirit. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, took bread, and after giving thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world.
through the breaking of the bread, we participate in the body of Christ. And through the cup of salvation, we participate in the new life that Christ offers to us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are now ready.
body of Christ given for you. pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I invite you if you are able and want to stand for our final hymn, number 61, We Would Be Building. microphone but sometimes I can't see if it's on or not. <laughs> and as we come to our benediction, remember the words of Jesus. Do not be afraid, little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And go forth to remembering this prayer from Teresa of Avila. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are changing. Love alone is changeless.
patience attains the good. One who has love lacks nothing. Love alone fills all our needs. Go in the peace and joy of Christ.